Hello everybody and welcome once again to All The Fabric 3. Today we are going to carry on with um, TIS 3D and we're going to have a look at two more modules. We're going to look at the serial module and we're also going to have a look at the display module. So let's get started. So what I've got here is a computer. <laughs> and it's actually, I've programmed a few programs up. So for example, one of the programs is called Level, level 1. Okay, press tab and we can have a look at that. So what this does is it just sets the redstone signal on the uh, on the right hand side of a value one. So I want to run that particular program. Oh, sorry, I should run it from here, shouldn't I? Control and run. And that's executed. We get finished. We can then exit this program as it happens because I don't need it anymore. And that's all that's going to do is set a signal here one. And the advantage of doing that is you can actually see what's here. So for example, here I've got a serial module, which you couldn't see before, it's black. So when it's got no signal at all, this, these items are black here. And here I have a small program. So we'll look at the small program in the book. So here's the serial program here. So all it does is it moves to the right hand side, the value of zero, which is going to cause the serial module to read the fuel. We'll have a look at that in a second. And then it's going to move from the right hand side, which is uh, where the register module is, no, the serial module, it's going to move it into the accumulator and then it's going to write it upwards. And then it's going to go back here to loop and it's going to repeat this process all the time. And what that's doing is simply reading the fuel level of the um, brewing stand. So let's have a look at the, let's have a look at the, um, the manual and have a look at serial modules. There's quite a few modules in here, serial port module here. So, so it, it basically tells you you've got it's a common protocol for various things we've got these serial protocols here and then we've got different types of um items there are three which have been uh provisional okay as is so we've got the brewing stand here so what it says about the brewing stand it says it measures two pro it actually measures two parameters it measures the progress of the particular brew starting at 100 and it's also measuring the fuel levels and it's the fuel levels is starts at 20 here we go here this is where it tells you that the brewing stand has a value absolute value of 0 to 20 is returned for reading current fuel value otherwise the switch is in the range of 0 to 100 when the mode okay so it's returning the information so I'll look at that but first of all have a look at the fuel level level here so at the moment oh, let's go back to the program and then we can see what I'm doing the moving the, the value zero to the right puts into the serial module the value zero, which is then going to read the fuel. So then it just simply loops around this loop here, uh, reading the fuel and puts it, displaying the value above it like that. Um, so let's run this program. Now the way I'm going to run this program is got. I'm just going to say level two. And instead of one, we're going to just do two. I press tab and press back press like that. Now it's going to just start it running in a very slow mode, as you can see. So that's the slowest mode here. So now this has got 13. So that's, the, that's equivalent to 19. This is hex. So that's 16 plus 3. So we look at here, you've got in here, it doesn't tell you the fuel level in here. Uh, but I have got some awkward potion in here. So for example, let's now change this program do that here instead of putting zero to the right let's put the value of one to the right here and then reprogram this like that so this is now going to send out a value of zero because it's got nothing to do it's finished so rather than run this too slowly i'm going to change this now to level three <laughs> i've got i've got um try three it's going to run a little bit faster i could actually write 16 programs or maybe i just speed this up like that so it's going to do that. I'm going to go and get something to brew in the brewing stand and I'll be back in a second so I picked up um, uh, a, ga a gas here to make some regeneration person but actually what I'll do is I'll speed this up with the lever so it now runs fast as you can see in fact it's actually running faster than uh, the lever because it's also got this redstone value here as well so let's put into this this brewing stand here this potion you'll watch these numbers and they'll change fairly quickly so we put it push this into here like that and you can see now it's going down as you can see and so when it reaches zero and you can look on here if i look on here like this interesting how it does this as it happens you'll see this is the progress and as it goes down to zero as you'll should be going down to actually quite quickly to zero you'll see this is finished like that 
but you know how it's finished. So you can check the value of this being greater than zero. You know it's in progress. If it's equal to zero, then it's finished. So that's how that works. It's not too complicated, but maybe the next thing we'll do is we'll actually get this to control the brewing strand to actually do a brew. So for example, the next one along here, I could put in um, something else. I was right clicking, that didn't work. So now we've got some regeneration potion. I could put in some red, redstone in here like this, and then it's going down as you can see. Now we've done two brews. So if I now go and change this program again, so let's just wait till it finishes. Maybe I can do it while I'm doing this actually. So we're sort of moving back to zero here. Oops, not quite right. Then we'll read the fuel again. So we'll reprogram this to read the fuel. Let's right click it like that. So now the value is 11, which is actually um, 16 plus one, so it's 17. So that, and we've done two brews, which makes perfect sense. So the next module we're going to have a look at is the display module. I'll turn this off because it's going to be too fast. We'll just let it tick through as we can see, as you can see. So the display module is a little bit different. In fact, I believe the documentation about the display module might be incorrect. So let's have a look at it. Display module. So this is a highly flexible method of visualizing arbitrary data in a two dimensional grid of colored cells. Um, what's it say? Isn't it pixels are as kids like to call them. <laughs> right. The color of these cells, uh, can be changed by providing a sequence of numbers to any of the four ports on the display module, con uh, containing a color code, a position code, and the size code of the rectal re to, to fill. So what he's got here is a little bit of a, these are the colors, which describes the colors. And here's a little program, which I've written and included in here. So what he does is it moves 16 into the accumulator because there are 16 colors. And then it loops. So it subtracts one from the loop. So we start at 15. So we basically go from 15 down to zero, which matches these colors in here like that. So it's moving the accumulator left, which is then giving the putting in the color Then it's moving the accumulator to the X position. So it's in line 16, a bit strange this as it happens. Then it's moving um, zero into the into the Y position, so it's the bottom position. And then it's moving one into the left position, which is the width, and 28, which is the height. And then it's jumping back up here. So let's put this program in. And I've basically programmed it with the same program. Like this, it's exactly the same program. So we can right click this on here like that. And now we've got the program going through here. And all I need to do now is put the display module on, which is this one like that and what it'll do you'll see what it's going to do it's going to draw light, vertical lines of color starting at position 16 here i believe should do oh yes there we go so it's drawn its first line here and then it's decrementing the value of this so you can actually see here the actual value of the accumulator it's so it's in c so the first one would have been e then it's d c Next one will be B, and then after that, it'll be A. So it's now drawing these colors. So if we go back to the book here, we should see that red is near the bottom of the colors. Like this, the first one would be in black, so you wouldn't have seen it on a black background. And then you've got green, and then you've got brown, as you can just see in the colors here, blue, purple. So the next one will be drawn as cyan, as you can see. And then the next one's going to be, it calls it silver, which really is like gray, I think, or gray, probably like that and then it's going to carry on and draw these and they're going to go keep being drawn as you can see so we can speed this up by turning this on you'll see what happens it's going to go through this loop a lot faster and then it should loop back again to the beginning uh, when it's finished doing its colors in fact to me it looks like it's looping around but it does have a bug <laughs> and maybe we can see this bug because it's strange bug what it does is it suddenly starts drawing these values vertically. And now instead of drawing them across horizontally, as you can see, each one of these is going like that. In fact, what we can do to to reset this, just take the module off and put it back on again. There we go. Now it's actually doing them vertically. So it's very strangely how it's doing this. I'm not quite sure how it's got it wrong. Uh, maybe because it didn't start at 
16 for the value of the accumulator when it's restarted this. So what you do is you stop the thing. Actually, I need to stop this one here. I have got another level as well. Zero. Which turns it off like that. So now we can start this. Now we should see this thing going through properly as you can, ex as you can expect it to do. Uh, so I'll just leave that running. So that basically is it in terms of this particular thing. So it's drawing, going from here across down to zero. Um, hopefully that is the leftmost point. Let's just check the manual, make sure that zero is in fact white. It is indeed white. But I believe that they're actually not 28 by 28. I think these are 24 by 24, but well, I'm not 100% sure. I need to test it. Anyway, it's not too important for this particular episode because I don't have anything too useful to do with this as it happens at the moment. And I'm not sure what I could do with it because it's quite slow because you need quite a lot of instructions just to draw one pixel. So whatever speed the, the engine is running or the controller is running at, this is going to be reasonably slow, as you can see by... Looking this, looking, turning it off and starting again. This is just one pixel. And it's it's quite slow between each pixel. Anyway, so before I go today, Tristan Watts asked a question about the control of uh, fa factories. Uh, I'm going to just put a factory on top of this one, a redstone block, so it goes up one position. And he's saying it's not showing the fact where you put the blocks, which of course is true. It's got nothing to do. If you right click this, it then shows the the blocks, where you place the blocks. You want to turn it off again, you just right click it again, and it doesn't matter if you've got something in your hand or not, it will do the same thing and display those. So that's it for this episode. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Anyway, until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.